Today on Blue Values, we have Al Witten and Ed Thomas of Placer County Grand Jury Association. Stay tuned. Blue Values TV is a production of Blue Values Coalition. Blue Values Coalition is a nonprofit organization dedicated to inspire, engage, and educate the citizens and the governance of our communities. You can visit us online at www.bluevaluescoalition.org. Today we are discussing the California Civil Grand Jury and the 58 counties it represents. Today we will have Al Witten and Ed Thomas from Placer County Grand Jury Association, which is a chapter of the California Civil Grand Jury. Thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you, Christine. Christine. So, Ed, can you please tell us uh, your background and what made you interested in joining the Grand Jury? I, I'm currently with the Placer County Grand Jury Association. I'm the public relations uh, chair and I've, I've worked on the Grand Jury uh, but for 2000, from 2010 to 2011. And what got my interest there is I, I was new to California for, by having a military background, so I was eager to learn about what was happening within the county that I was living. So this experience has actually gave me a, a, a wealth of knowledge as far as how the county actually operates. So that's my primary reason, and I feel blessed to be able to have, have done that. And Al, what is your role, and what made you interested into joining on the grand jury? Well, my role is president of the Placer County Grand Jurors Association, which is an educational outreach organization and part of the state chapter California Grand Jurors Association. I served on the 2009-2010 grand jury. It was just uh, overwhelmingly uh, very beneficial and satisfying year that I spent. It went by extremely fast, and I wanted to continue in some behalf. So in 2011, a group of us formed the Placer County Grand Jurors Association chapter. And uh, it's been um, very interesting, very beneficial. You gain a tremendous amount of knowledge of both your city and county organizations, your agencies, the people who run the agencies. Now before we discuss the great work that you've done with your organization, can we give the viewers an overview of the California Grand Jury and what makes it different from that of other states? Well, in California we have a civil grand jury system. Many other states will have a criminal grand jury system which is entirely different. On the criminal grand jury, that is a, for a shorter period of time, and in addition, a criminal grand jury will, uh, they will not decide whether a person is guilty or innocent, but they will decide if there is sufficient evidence to bind a person over for indictment for a criminal trial. Here in California, we have the civil grand jury, and in the civil grand jury system, uh, we have a grand jury that is impaneled for 12 months, one full year, starting in July 1st of each year and going through June 30th. And this is occurring in all 58 uh, counties throughout the state. The civil grand jury also uh, this looks into matters of civil nature for your cities, your counties, your special districts, your fire districts, your water district, uh, both the people who manage the various different uh, agencies throughout the county and the cities, and how the agencies are run, how they spend your money, the taxpayers' money. So as a civil grand juror, uh, the, the grand jury is the public's watchdog, and we're impaneled to do investigations of civil nature of those cities and county agencies and organizations. 
Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, he made a brief video of the overview introduction of the grand jury. Uh, Ed, would you be able to elaborate further in with this video? Uh, basically what I was saying is that that the Go Governor Schwarzenegger, he proclaimed February as Grand Jury Awareness Month. And with that, uh, we have brought that forward to Placer County and it took that to the uh, Board of Supervisors where they actually presented a proclamation. I would like to show that proclamation now if I could. Okay, let's, let's see that. Again, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger uh, declared uh, February as Grand Jury, uh, Grand Jury Awareness Month. And we have uh, brought that even further in declaring it uh, for Placer County as February as Grand Jury. And this should be a continuing uh, saga as we move forward. Ed, would you be able to explain to us what we're going to see in the video that was produced by Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom? Basically, the lieutenant governor indicated or, or showed that uh, the 58 counties in, in, in California do have grand juries and they're primarily civil grand juries. And that it's important that the public are aware of the grand juries and what it actually does. And we, as Al and I, our Placer County Grand Jury Association, Association. We both served on the grand jury. I served in 2010, 2011, and I think Al served 2009, 2010, and maybe another term. But uh, what we do, we look at uh, in we look at county and and uh, offices and agencies and determine if there's a complaint from a citizen or something going awry within the county. And we take that and we investigate. And we, in turn, we, if we find something credible, we validate and we uh, do an investigation, come up with a finding and recommendations. Those recommendations go back to the individual department and where they have to respond. As part of the California, I mean, as part of the Placer County Grand Jury Association, we have what that we call an implementation uh, uh, committee uh, to verify that these uh, prior uh, findings and recommendations are actually complying with. If not, if not, we follow up on those and uh, just basically make sure that they are continued on. California's founders understood the importance of citizen oversight of local government, writing into our state constitution the requirement that each county will convene a civil grand jury with the express purpose of investigating government activity. Each year, counties need citizens just like you to serve on the grand jury. I encourage you to do your civic duty to help hold local government accountable. I urge you to contact the California Grand Jurors Association to learn how you can serve on your county's civil grand jury. So we just saw the video and we saw that the citizens of the counties are what represents the grand juries. Can you explain to us what it is like to serve on the jury? What is the process? What's the time commitment? And who can serve on the jury? Well, first of all, the time commitment is that you're volunteering one full year of time. It's not full time. It uh, consumes about 40 to 50 hours a month of your time as a volunteer and that time starts on uh, July 1st and goes through June 30th. The time commitment involves uh, as a member of the grand jury there are 19 members of each grand jury except down in Los Angeles which is a larger county and has 23 members. Uh, the grand jury composed of 19 members uh, will meet twice a month in the full panel. They'll also meet in various different committees. Uh, generally, you start off with about eight different committees in your grand jury. Each member of the grand jury then will serve on two to three committees, and those committees meet twice a month. So your time commitment is the full panel meeting twice a month, where all 19 members are involved, and also your committee meetings twice a month, at least twice a month. 
as you get deeper into investigations, your committees will meet more often. You're also doing interviews. You might choose to interview both witnesses or possibly the person who have filed a complaint. And you'd like to, uh, for the interviews, it requires a minimum of two grand jurors to be present. Usually you'll have a half a dozen or so grand jurors that are present for most interviews. You're also doing field work where you go out and you actually will um, look at what you're investigating. Uh, you might visit various different departments throughout the county, and throughout the city. So there is a substantial time commitment. The requirements to be a grand juror in the state of California are, first of all, you have to be a U.S. citizen. You have to live in the county for at least one year. And you have to be a minimum of 18 years older. And you also have to have a fairly good knowledge of English and also have a a workable understanding of computer because you will be involved in a lot of emailing back and forth and a lot of report writing as you progress with your investigations. Now what kind of committees are there that get formed? Does it split up with far as prison systems with different government officials? Can you elaborate a little different more with sure. the different subcommittees? Uh, excellent question. Uh, there are approximately eight different committees. Uh, you've got the Criminal Justice Committee, and one of the mandates in the Penal Code is that the grand jury will uh, inspect all the holding facilities, all the jails, and all the prisons throughout the county. Here in Placer County, we now have seven holding facilities or prisons. So the Criminal Justice Committee will go out and inspect all of those. In addition, you have the city's committee, you have the county committees, you have um, health and education. There is a lot of organizations within Placer County that have to deal with health and education. So that all falls within that committee. You've got the continuity and editorial committee. And uh, various other side committees, special districts. You have fire districts, uh, you have uh, water districts. These all fall into special districts. So these committees will form, they will decide what they want to investigate, and from there they will continue the investigations, they will bring that information to the full panel during meetings, and at each full panel meeting they'll decide whether to continue the investigations uh, or if the investigation is not turning up any information that uh, is vital, then the full panel can decide to also terminate an investigation. And a lot of investigations are terminated, or they will start off as an investigation and then become an informational report. That's very interesting to hear. Some cases turn into information uh, reports. Now, how does a citizen go about in filing a complaint? And then how do you decide if this is a complaint that is worth researching about? Well, actually, a citizen can actually go online and they can uh, pull up the complaint information and they can file, or they can file it right with the grand jury. And all the, uh, the grand jurors will review the complaints and they will decide if the individual that submitted the complaint has exhausted all avenues before submitting it. And if so, we'll, it, we can investigate that complaint. And uh, then if there's any findings, we will write recommendations and, uh, to the particular agency that's uh, involved. Now, does the agency have to cooperate with the investigation? Does an agency have to respond to any recommendations? Is there any liability for yes, any of the uh, investigations? And that's an excellent question because under California Penal Code, the agency that uh, the report was issued towards must respond. And they must respond within a specific period of time and in a specific manner. And this is all listed in the Penal Code of California specifically as to how they do respond. For instance, if uh, the report goes to an elected official, that elected official has 60 days to respond back to Superior Court. And remember, the grand jury operates as 
a watchdog agency for the public, but under the arm of Superior Court. So that response has to go back to Superior Court and to the grand jury. If uh, the individual is an appointed or hired uh, head of a department and is the person who the report was directed to, then they have 90 days to respond. And they have to respond very specifically to the findings. They have to say whether the findings uh, they feel are valid or if they disagree with the findings. And they cannot disagree in full or impartial. In regards to the uh, recommendations, and the recommendations are developed from the various different findings, they have to specifically say that the recommendations have been implemented or that the recommendation will be implemented with a specific timeline or that the recommendation requires full, or, full further review and they have to give a specific timeline or they can just simply say that they don't agree with the recommendation and it's not going to be implemented at all. Christine, could I follow up on that? Uh, the Placer County Grand Jury Association takes those findings and recommendations and yes, they look to see if the timeline line was actually followed and if for some reason it was not, then we, we can go back and follow up and get back with the agency and get it back on track the way it should be. So uh, that's one function of the Placer County Grand Jury Association. The primary part, function of the, the uh, association is to support the, the county courts and the sitting grand juries. And the way we do that is we, we, we go out and we solicit support for applications for new grand jurors. And by the way, we've got a, a meet and greet coming up uh, this month. I, I believe it was April the 9th at, uh, what, 9 a.m.? 2 p.m. 2, 2 p.m. in the, uh, the county grand jury office. And hopefully we'll get enough people to attend that they uh, are briefed on what we actually, the grand jury actually does, and they may, may be interested in come, uh, applying for the next grand jury that comes up in July. The deadline for applying is May the 15th. I think it's at by 3 p.m. So you can go online to these, uh, the Placer County Grand Jury Association or the Grand Jury Association or the court and you can pull up an application form there and then you can apply. If you want to go to this uh, meet and greet, you can actually apply there. So then what happens after you fill out an application, you submit it in, uh, what is the process from there? How do they elect? for who's going to be on the grand jury? Well, the process is pretty straightforward, and it's similar in all 58 counties. Uh, you make the application, in this case, by May 15th, and from the application, then those that are qualified will be asked to come down to the courthouse and meet with the advising judge of the grand jury. And usually the foreperson from the sitting grand jury uh, might also be participating. So this gives the applicant an opportunity to find out more information about what the grand jury is all about and also to ask any specific questions that they might have. It also gives the judge and the foreperson the opportunity to ask any questions that they might have of the applicant. Now that occurs um, about mid-June and then on July 1st, on or about July 1st, the new grand jury is impaneled. It will be anywhere from four to six or so, plus or minus holdovers from one grand jury to the next. And this provides continuity from the uh, holdovers and the balance will be uh, selected by random drawing. The court will select 19 members plus alternates. Then in about the third week of July, all the newly impaneled grand jurors will have a two-day training session. That training session is put on by the California Grand Jury Association. And as Ed uh, mentioned, we are a chapter of the California Grand Jury Association here in Placer County. So can you tell us about a case and how it impacted the community here? Can you give us an example? 
there's a couple of good cases. Uh, one was when we did the um, uh, we did a report in 2009-10 on uh, city manager salaries, and it was an informational report. We felt that the public that this was during the time when we had a lot of economic uh, upheaval, both city, county, and nationally. So we did a report on how the city manager's salaries uh, for various different uh, communities compared. We compared them to other cities throughout both the state and also other cities throughout the United States. That was a very good report. Um, there's another uh, excellent report was on audits. We did a report on how the public can find out about audits throughout the county and what the various different types of audits were done each year. Remember, the grand jury, as a watchdog for the public, w will be looking into how funds are spent. Not only how a department is run, but how that department spends the public's money in the process of performing its duties. Now, where can people go to look at the reports and the recommendations? Where can, where can we look? Is there online? Do we go to libraries? Uh, they're, they're actually on both of those. They're online and they're in the public libraries. We give hard copies to the, I think well, we give at least a half a dozen hard copies to each public library in the county. And online, they can go to the court's uh, uh, website, to the uh, grand jury website, or to Placer County uh, 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 Association website. And uh, that they will link them to those particular reports and they can review reports not only for the current year, for, but for previous years. Now, can you please go into more detail with the organization with Placer County Grand Jury? Uh, do you work with the investigations? Do you just provide a support, research? What are you, what are you able to do the, as your organization? Uh, the Placer County Grand Jurors Association was formed in 2011, and it is a chapter of the statewide organization, the C CGJA, which is the California Grand Jury Association. California Grand Jurors Association, uh, they do all the training for the newly impaneled grand jurors. They, as I mentioned, they do the training in July, which is a two-day training session. They also do a one-day report writing training seminar, uh, which will occur probably this year around the latter part of September. Now, as a chapter of the state organization, the Placer County Grand Jurors Association is an educational outreach, and we uh, also support the sitting grand jury. Now, everything that the sitting grand jury does is secret. What they're working on is confidential. What they're not working on is confidential. So we do not participate at all with the sitting grand jury. We are completely uh, separate from them. We are public citizens. We're comprised primarily of past grand jurors, the uh, members of the sitting grand jury can elect to also join our organization. And we have a number of concerned citizens that are uh, associated members. So from that standpoint, most of our effort is involved in educational outreach. As uh, Ed mentioned, doing presentations to civic groups and letting them know what the grand jury is all about and also doing the implementation review as private citizens going before the Board of Supervisors or City Council and requesting whether the recommendations have been implemented and what the status is of a, a recommendation that they might have said they might implement. So that's basically the Placer County Grand Jurors Association. Well, that is, that's really wonderful. Well, I would like to know, I think the viewers would be interested to know then is if you're only sitting on for one year, you have to do some training, about how long do you have to do an investigation and get a report done? Now, that's a very interesting question, too, because the timeline goes really quick. When you are first impaneled as a grand juror, you're saying, wow, one full year, uh, that, that seems so long. 
you start getting involved with the investigations and that year gets chewed up really quick. Give you an, a little indication of the timeline. The new grand jury will be impaneled uh, on or about July 1st. On July 20th and 21st, they'll have their training. In the interim between that time uh, and for July and part of August, they'll be forming their own committees. They'll be deciding how they're going to operate. And each grand jury can decide under what uh, rules they want to operate under. They might uh, elect to do Robert's Rules of Order, or they might choose some other system. It's up to them. They will appoint their own committee chairs. They will appoint their own uh, office staff. Everything is written by the grand jurors themselves. So they're a very independent organization. In fact, they're the most independent organization within the county. The grand jurors will also then um, after July, they'll start deciding which investigations they want to do. An investigation is never carried over from one grand jury to the next. So if the current grand jury is in the middle of an investigation and doesn't have time to publish that report, then it's frozen. It's dropped. The next grand jury does not take up that lead. Oh, wow. They decide on their own what they're going to investigate. Then the investigations will go through, through um, till starting in July, through till approximately February. The latest would be March, and then they have to start writing reports. And the report on that investigation can take anywhere from a month or two. So by the mid part of May, that report has to go to the printer and be published before it goes to the printer to, for publishing. It has to go to the advising judge of the grand jury for uh, the judge's approval and also to county council to make sure that there are no legalities that are being broken and that everything that the grand jury has done conforms to penal code. Then at the end of June, it can be published. Just to follow up again, uh, if the current grand jury is working on something that they don't have time to finish and they really think it's important that that happens and that uh, they can put it on what we call a carryover and then the other grand jury can take a look at the, the topics and then they can decide whether or not they want to uh, move forward with it. Uh, again, the investigation that the previous grand jury did, we can't use. The current grand jury cannot use. They have to do their own investigation. So uh, that way, it, there's no conflict between the previous and the current grand juries. Wow, so it's a very fast-paced position once you are sworn <coughs> in into it. Right. And you want to get things investigated thoroughly, make sure that if there is a complaint, if it's, if it's a plausible one or unfounded, and then move forward from there. Uh, thank you. Thank you both for being on our show today. Thank you, Ed Thomas and Al Thank Whitten you, for being on here. So all the viewers out there who are excited and want to join on the grand jury, please do check out the websites for the California grand jury and for the Placer County grand jury. And if anybody has any questions, please contact Al Witten or Ed Thomas of the Placer County Grand Jury Association. Below is their websites. And thank you again for thank being you, on. And thank, thank you. you viewers for watching. And until next time, have a good night.